Okay, in this video, I'm going to be going through a paper that has just come out in the past few days called Visual Chat GPT. This is from Microsoft Research Asia. And the idea here is that you've got a language conversational AI experience where people can talk to a model or can converse with the agent, and then it will use some sort of prompt manager to basically convert that into text to images, but then allow you to do different things with those text to images. Let's jump in to have a look at just what it can do. And then we'll come back and go through some parts of the paper and then later on through the code. Microsoft has released the code for this. Unfortunately, at the moment uh, when I tested it, it didn't actually work for uh, Google Colab, but lucky for us, Rupesh Srimaran, hopefully I'm pronouncing that, has actually made a, a, a Colab version. It's basically made some edits to it to turn off some of the modules so that it will fit in the Colab GPU and also fix some things in the requirements and stuff like that to basically get it going. And it, it seems to work quite nicely here. So you will go through and run this code. Once we've got the code like this, we can open up the Gradio tab for this. And you'll see that we've basically just got a simple sort of chatbot interface. So if I just come in here and type in, make a picture, of a cute cat. And you'll see that if we come back to the collab, we can see that it's actually kicking off a Langchain agent. So I'll walk through the code later on and we'll have a look at exactly what's going on. But we can see here that this Langchain agent has basically started. We've got a input from make a picture of a cute. We can see that it's refined the actual prompt that I gave it. So it's actually added cinematic lighting, highly detailed concept art, a lot of the typical sort of stable diffusion kind of things in there. And then it's created an image. So let's go back and look at this and we can see that, yeah, that's a pretty cute cat, right? It's basically done a standard text to image kind of thing using it's probably stable diffusion here, but we can then now go along and say things like what color is the cat? We can see the cat in the image is gray. Can you change the cat to be a ginger cat? So the version that we're using in Colab doesn't have all of the models in this. And this puts us at a little bit of a disadvantage compared to full one, but let's come in and look at what it's doing. So in this case, rather than modify that image, it's actually just making a new image here. So it's made a new image. Here is an image of a ginger cat. Okay. It's definitely a ginger cat. Let me ask it things like, what is the ginger cat wearing? Okay. So it's wearing sunglasses. So the way that it's doing that for these questions like this is that it's using the blip VQA. So the VQA is a visual question answering module. And Blip is a model that was created by sales that is able to basically extract embeddings out of images and use that for captioning, use that for determining content that's in there. So we could ask it, what is the background? And again, this should be using the Blip QA. Sure enough, it is. It just says a sky in the background. Now you notice that the Blip VQA just returns the observation sky. And then the GPT model actually rewrites the, the background of based on the question, because we have a memory going on here. We can see that we've got this memory. If we look at the, the memory that's going on here, that we can see that's going on. And based on that, it can then write the output for this particular task. Let's have a look at the paper and see what it is that they're doing. So one of the big elements of this paper is this idea of VFMs as they call them. So this stands for visual foundation models and the visual foundation models are a series of models that allow for image creation and image manipulation. So we have like our standard stable diffusion or control net for creating images. If you're interested in control net, I have a number of videos coming up about this. We also have then things like manipulation tools of pix to pix image stuff. A lot of the control net stuff is also image manipulation tools. And then we also have some tools like the blip, which can be used for visual question answering and detection models for finding out what's going on in, in the actual models. So the idea here is that you've got the query, it comes in and it goes into this prompt manager. Now in reality, this prompt manager is actually a Langchain agent. So we'll look at the code in a minute and you'll see that this Langchain agent is what's deciding what tool do we use? So 
All of the VFMs are basically tools, and there are a variety of these in here. There are some of them listed out in the paper, but there are a whole bunch of these different VFMs. And this prompt manager uses GPT. It's actually not even ChatGPT technically in that it's not the GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's just the more traditional text DaVinci 003 that they're using. We'll look at the code in a second. And you can see that it can basically take something in and then decide, do I need to use a VFM or not? Remember, this is a visual foundation model. And if it was something like, yes, create an image, it would go off and use maybe the stable diffusion tool or something like that and create an image. If it was something like modify the image, it will use a different tool. So you can see here, we've got this image of a sofa and basically the person saying, replace the sofa in the image with a desk and then make it like a watercolor painting. So first off, it basically does a chain where it changes it into a desk and then it changes it into a watercolor painting. And then something like what color is the wall? And this will be using the blip for that part there. The way this thing puts it all together, it stores a history of the dialogue so it can look back and see what you were talking about early on. So things remain in context, but you've got this really nice sort of prompt managers that are running the choices of these tools and then passing in the text input to the tools to then manipulate the images. They also have to pass around image names so that if an image is being used, it knows what to do with this. So let me just show you a quick example of an image manipulation, and then we can jump in and have a look at the code. We've got our, let's try a new one. Make a picture of sunset in New City. So here we're going to basically, we're generating a new image. If we came across and we looked at the collab, we would see that sure enough, it's generating a new image. The image is made. And that's definitely a New York style sort of th thing. Let's say I wanted to get one of the things that you can do with control net is we can get the edges of this. Please get the canny edge protection of this image. Now what it's going to do is that it's going to run the tool for canny edge detection. And you can see sure enough. It's gone through and gotten the edges for this. If you don't know, Kenny edge detection is quite an old algorithm that you can run on images to basically get something like this, where you're getting the edges out. And then using something like control net, you can actually then use this to create a new image or to manipulate and guide a new image that you're creating in here. So we can see that it's quite good at getting all the different part of this. Let's jump into the code. So as I mentioned earlier on, this is the repo. I'll put this in the description from Rupesh's made, and we can just basically load up the collab from there. If we go and look at the modified code, so he's left all the code in, he's just commented some stuff out to basically make it run in collab, which is really good. So first off, when we come in here and look at this, we can see that, okay, it's using hugging face for a number of the VFMs. We can see that we've got the stable diffusion from diffusers. We've got this pix to pix you know, the instruct pix to pix pipeline in there as well. And of course we've got Langchain. And I think, you know, that maybe the paper doesn't give quite enough credit to Langchain as being the brains of this, in that, that this is actually using these agents and these tools to do this. It's also using a memory. So the memory it's using is the conversational buffer memory. So if you've watched my video on different types of Langchain memory, you know that this is the sort of most common one that you would use that would track every interaction between the user and the bot and store it. We can see that they're not using the latest OpenAI model. They're actually using the old one from this. You can also see that they're bringing in blip. We've got blip for question answering, et cetera, going on in here as well. And then we've got the control net going on. The main sort of agent is driven by a prompt. So here we can see the prompt and we can see that the prompt is then gonna pass in tools. And the prompt is setting up the language model to decide, do we need to use a tool or not? And then if we do, what tool do we need? So if it's yes, it needs to then basically tell us what tool to use. So if we look back again at the Kenny Edge one that we just did, we got edge detection. So do we need to use a tool? Yes. And then the edge detection. And then what was going to be the input to that tool? It was going to be this image that we were passing in and that we were getting this image to canny inference going on, on there. We can also see that them setting up sort of functions, some functions for doing different elements of this and also classes for the different models or the different VFMs as they're referring to them. So the mask former 
I don't think we actually have that in the collab version. We can look down, we've got pics to pics. A number of these are actually turned off in the collab version. So let me scroll down and we can actually have a look at, so we can see that this is just defining all of these tools. So it's, it's useful code to look at and work out how you would use these tools if you wanted to do something like this for yourself. Okay, so here's our conversation bot. And you can see that the tools so you can see there's the traditional open AI model, not the, the turbo model, but we can see that a lot of the tools here are basically commented out. So what we would have liked to do is that Kenny to image, but just because of the memory of Colab, those tools are not loaded in here. So we've got the blip one loaded. We've got a number of the other ones loaded in here, but we don't have, actually we've got the image ca captioning loaded by the looks of this, but we don't have the pics to pics. We don't have some of the other ones in here. And this just means it's a simplified version to, to run on Colab. If you've got your own setup where you could actually load up each of these, most welcome, go to the original Microsoft one and try it out. And you can then see, then it would be able to use a variety of different tools. Okay. The conversation memory, we talked about that is just using the standard conversation buffer memory. And then we can see the tools that is getting passed into the agent. So when the agent gets initialized, it's told all the tools that it's got access to so that it can choose which tools to use. And you can see that, okay, here we've got a description. Let me just come back to the thing and ask it to give us a, give me a description. Let's get for the image. Okay, so I think I missed out of space there. Okay, so it's interesting. I can see, use that. And it's basically said, this image shows a view of the empire building in New York. What time for? Day is it in the image? Okay, the image shows a sunset. So to do those things, they're having to look up descriptions and they're using the blip VQA for that. And just to show you that the language model is still there. So if remember that language model is deciding all the time, do I need a tool or do I not need a tool? So to show you that sometimes it doesn't need a tool, let's just ask it, how are you today? I'm doing great. So we can see for that one, it didn't need a tool. When we look at this, we'll see that, okay, how are you today? It passed in the memory of everything we've talked about. Does it need a tool? No. And then the GPT model just answers directly for that. So that, that makes it easy. So this is where the tools get turned on and off. And this is how Langchain is basically deciding what tools it uses and what tools it doesn't. We can see then it basically just initializes the text. Another interesting thing is that this agent that they're using is the conversational React agent. So this is based on the React paper. So this is not React, the front end framework that was created by Facebook. This is a paper of using a language model to make decisions and to provide steps for actions going forward. I'll do a video about that and how that works when I get to making some videos about agents in Langchain. The rest of it is just basically putting it all together. I think that sort of covers most of it. If you're interested in the paper, it is worth looking at the different models that they use and how it's, it's put together. They do give a little bit of credit to Langchain. They mention it down here. And you can see here that they do mention also that they're just using the original text DaVinci 003. And to run the full 22 visual foundation models, they actually need four V100s to do that. So that's a bit beyond what we've got in Colab for this. Anyway, have a play with it. It's a fun model to play with and just see how it was put together. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. Let me know if you would like to see more paper walkthroughs for this kind of thing. As always, if you found this useful, please click and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video. Thank you for watching.